Hey Bozo, I'm gonna spend the next 8 minutes trying to gaslight and convince you that this is not grey. It isn't some sort of optical illusion where the surrounding colours influence what you see, nor is it a black and blue dress scenario. It's all to do with how the monitor works, how your eyes work, and how we can never measure up to shrimp. This shape is not grey. It's actually a mix of red, green, and blue. See, modern screens produce shapes by dividing the screen into pixels, and they produce colour by dividing each pixel into sub-pixels. There's three of them, one for red, one for blue, and one for green, or RBG for short. These colours match the three colour receptors in the human eye, one for red, one for blue, and one for dark red. Now, when visible light hits our eye, its wavelength comes into play. As the name implies, the wavelength is the length of the wave, and for visible light, that determines the light's colour. By using the white red, the middle of the road green, and the thin energetic blue, we can detect everything in between. Is it between red and green? That's yellow. Is it between green and blue? That's teal. Is it between red and blue? That's purple, apparently. Uh, I would think that it's green, but this video is about gray, so let's just leave it, okay? White is a mix of all colors, and gray is a less intense white. Which brings us back to the original argument, this is not gray. It's actually a mix of red, green, and blue. There are millions of colors which we can detect, and it is simply impractical to manufacture a way to produce each and every one of them. Instead, screens only use three colors, and by varying their strengths, trick our minds by activating our color receptors the same way the target color would. If we were to look at the light levels coming from the gray object, it should look like this. But since the light coming from our screens is limited to red, green, and blue, it'll actually look like this. Clearly different. And I did my research on this, barely, I wanted to see if there was actually a screen type that doesn't limit its output to our primary colors, but no. At some point along the process, maybe from filtering white light or maybe by straight up producing the colors, only red, green, and blue light will hit our eyes. LCD screens have a white backlight, three filters, and a converter whose efficiency can be controlled. The first filter only allows horizontal light through. The second filter only allows vertical light through. And the third filter limits the light to being one of the three subpixel colors. The converter will turn some horizontal light into vertical light, allowing it to pass the second filter. We can control the brightness by controlling how much light the converter can convert. LED screens are LCD screens that have an LED backlight. You'd think they would just have a bunch of different colored LEDs arranged in pixels, but that isn't the case. They have the same principle and filter the colors in the same way. The main difference is that they use an LED light instead of a instead of a what source of light does LCD use? Uh, cold cathode fluorescent lights. I'm keeping that take. My original perception of screens is actually a thing though. They are called micro LED screens and operate by controlling each subpixel independently. But this technology is not as prevalent as the other two. Regardless, they too only produce color in red, green, and blue. The last two are CRT, cathode ray tube, and plasma screens. They both work by using the same principle as neon signs. They excite gaseous particles, causing them to emit light. Each chamber has a specific concoction of gas that produces only, you guessed it, red, green, or blue light, and the two types only differ by how the gases are excited. CBT screens use a <laughs> CRT screens use a beam of electrons which they bend through magnetism, and plasma, scre plasma screens control each subpixel directly. Each and every method limits their color output to red, green, or blue. There are legit only three ways I can think of where this object is grey. One, you can print it out and view it in person. And I can't be bothered researching printers too, but depending on the printer, you might come across the same issue. Two, you are viewing this with a film projector. In which case, where are you based and can you be my friend? Or three, you are viewing this in a black and white CRT TV. Back then, they didn't have colors, so instead of using phosphors that produce red, green, and blue lights, they use uh to make uh.
Now, you might be thinking, Ray, you dense, chuckle-headed mouth breather, you good-for-nothing, oxygen-wasting, pea-brained homunculus, you idiotic, imbecilic, view one vulgar slang word, you got all this way for nothing. So what if it doesn't include all colors? It looks gray, it smells gray, it must be gray. Even if it's missing a few colors, it still functions in the exact same way. So, why should we care, huh? Okay, first off, Alexa, play fart noises. Second, it doesn't function in the same way. If you shine light from your screen through a prism, you wouldn't get a rainbow, you'd get this. If humans can detect more than three colors or can make out details from farther away, this would not be gray. It would be some other color, or a discrete mix of colors that we can make out. And it isn't impossible. For reference, compared to the humans 3, some animals have more than 15 photoreceptors, and other animals can have vision many times better than our own. Point is, to many species out there, this isn't gray. If the human eye evolved any different, you wouldn't call this gray. In fact, we can say the same thing for every color other than red, green, and blue. The monitor doesn't produce the same wavelength of light, it just stimulates your eyes in the same way. Okay, human to human, in a casual manner, yeah, it's probably fine to call this gray. This might just be the biggest erm actually ever, but to be honest, it's just not the right mix of colors. And you know what happens when things aren't mixed properly? N word. Let's play. On a side note, I think screen manufacturers should use four subpixels instead of three. It just makes sense to have it in this orientation instead of this. Also, if we were ever to come across other sentient life, it would be cool to see how screen technology would evolve to accommodate different photoreceptor counts. Also, also, just another thing to think about the next time you play D&D. Oh yeah, if all else fails and you still think that it's grey, it's actually silver. So, um, yep, yeah, I win. Later, bozo.